Welcome to the Hard Questions, Real Answers podcast from Back to the Bible. I am here today with my special guest, president and founder of Capital Studies, Reverend Perry Gauthier. Perry, ha- great to have you on the show today. Thank you, Dad. It's great to be here. I've loved Back to the Bible, been in Lincoln 40 years and have just watched the ministry affect the world. So it's a real privilege to be on with you. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's neat to see what God's doing through Back to the Bible, but it's neat to know what God is doing through you and your ministry. Mm -hmm. So for our listeners and those watching today who may not know much about you or your ministry, would you just let us know a little bit more about it? Yes, gladly, gladly. The ministry is called Capital Studies International. Mm -hmm. And in a nutshell, what I'm doing is I'm a Bible teaching evangelist in the political world. Hmm. So, you know, what FCA does for athletes, reaching coaches and athletes and those they influence, everybody knows FCA. Right. Uh, we do that for political leaders. Hmm. So we kind of parachute into the political world mm-hmm. and we come not with the Republican flag, uh, not with any party flag. We're not partisan tied, partisan beholden, partisan driven. Mm-hmm. We're theologically driven as Bible teachers mm-hmm. and we're, we aim to, and we fix to get Christ. Uh, word into the capitals. So that might mean evangelism and seeing people come to Christ, hearing Mm -hmm. the gospel of free grace that radically saved me as a college freshman. Mm -hmm. Or it might mean uh, Bible studies. That's kind of the core of how we start Mm -hmm. is with Bible studies. And then then it also would include pastoring, just Mm -hmm. caring about these precious politicians. Mm -hmm. And when I preach in churches around the country, when I say Precious politicians, mm. people laugh. <laughs> and I say, I bet I'm the first one you've ever heard say that. Mm. But as a pastor, I really do care right. uh, for these people. They're important in culture, mm-hmm. but they matter to God. They're they're uh, people too. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. We really uh, just aim to honor Christ mm. and to spread his word, teach his word, and share his gospel. Wow. Well, one of the things, uh, we want to get into more of a theology and understand Mm -hmm. government from a biblical perspective in our role. But before I get there, I'm just curious, why get into this area of ministry? Because one of the things I've been very um, Mm -hmm. uh, passionate about is making sure people get plugged in where their passions are, right? And going to their natural spheres of influence. Uh, I probably would never get into the, sorry, I would never get into the realm of politics for a ministry directly, but that's where God has led you. So how'd you get into this particular yeah. area? <laughs> that's a great question. Now, uh, I, I like to tell people I was a very unlikely candidate mm-hmm. because um, I was taught two common errors in the churches. It's easy to get church state theology wrong. As much as I love my first pastor and, and the man who led me to Christ, loved them dearly. Mm-hmm. But uh, they kind of taught me subtly two errors. One is that only the gospel matters, stay out of government. Mm. And the other, so I didn't, as a result, I didn't vote till I was 30. Wow. Because I just, <laughs> I, I say, I'm preaching the gospel. I'm teaching the word. My nose was in the air and I kind of despised politics. Mm. The other uh, error is like that. It is that all government is evil and mm. demonic. Mm. There's a pastor in Minnesota that wrote a book. It's not, it's an unfortunate book. He lost a thousand people in his congregation when mm. he when he preached uh, the series that became the book. Mm-hmm. Well, in the book, he says that Satan is in fact the CEO of every civil government. Wow. Yeah, and it's like that is just so untrue. Mm-hmm. He's the god. He's the prince of power of the air. He's the god of this world. He can get his claws into the mind of any political leader right. and any group of them. Mm. But he can do the same thing with a minister with a husband and wife. In every of God's five institutions, Satan can get his claws in and corrupt Mm -hmm. it. But that doesn't mean it's not God's idea to start with, like marriage, the family, Hmm. commerce, and so too, uh, Romans 13, 1 civil government. Right. So I was a very unlikely candidate, but (laughs) but a brother in Christ came, uh, and a pastor friend told this guy who ran the ministry before me, uh, you should talk to Perry Gothier. He'd be great at this. Mm. And I had done part-time college ministry. Okay. And um, I'd done a little bit of church planting. Mm. And I thought, wow, he didn't know what he was talking about, but God did. Because, uh-huh. and at first I wasn't interested, but the more he told me about it, it's about the gospel. Mm. It's about the word of God. Uh, I said, I'm not real political. He said, that's okay. Because we're not hiring you as a lobbyist, but we're hiring you as a Bible teaching evangelist. Uh-huh. I said, that I can do. And so it was real awkward at first, Mm -hmm. uh, understanding this realm that I used to despise. Mm -hmm. Now I love it. I love government. It's so fascinating, Mm. especially because I'm coming from from the biblical theological 
uh, realm, which is what drives me. Right. And right. so, so my joys and my knowledge are just multiplied. Mm. It's like, this is incredible. Wow. So yeah, it's I was an unlikely candidate for sure. Well, <laughs> well, let, let's just get into the heart of the subject because you just brought it up: civil yes, government. Sir. What does the Bible actually say about civil government, if anything whatsoever? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very good. I love that. Right. If anything, I told a group recently I could teach an hour-long section every week for two years mm. and not do exactly the same theological con con contextual content of truth. Mm. So from cover to cover, uh, the old Irish woman said, from kiver to kiver, <laughs> uh, you know, from Genesis to maps, mm. um, the Bible is replete with information on civil government. Mm. So whether it's Abraham chasing the kings on the plain, mm -hmm. um, or whether it's, it's the priests interacting, or it's Jonah with the king of Nineveh, or Paul uh, wanting to go to Rome to preach to the king of the world, mm -hmm. Caesar, and then being in Caesar's house and... Uh, or clear to the end in the book of Revelation where we were, we are told in end times that we will be kinging mm -hmm. with Christ. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine said, uh, well, if you don't like political leaders, you really better get your mind changed because you will be one someday <laughs> right. as you reign with mm -hmm. Christ. Well, reign's the verb, so we don't say we'll king with Christ, mm -hmm. but as we reign with him, we really will. So the Bible is truly full, chocked full mm. of, I call it, church-state theology. Okay. Mm. Well, so that brings up another question. It seems like there's a lot of confusion today about the role of government, yes. um, and especially from a biblical perspective. But I mean, it, depending on who you talk to on the street, what is the role of government? You'll hear some pretty wild and crazy ideas. Yes. So what does the Bible actually teach us about the role of government? Yes, that's a great question. In its most basic form, uh, government is to punish evil and promote the general welfare mm. by doing that. Mm. So it's just like the Ten Commandments are negative. Uh, they're the ten Hebrew words, because it has the Hebrew lo, which is the negator, mm -hmm. before a verb. It's mm -hmm. just ten verbs. Well, why are they so negative? I asked a Supreme Court justice that one time. I said, I, I find that so many laws are negative and restrictive. I said, is that kind of lawmaking from your perspective as a judge? He said, absolutely. Law is more negative than positive. Hmm. I said, well, good. I feel good <laughs> in, in a sense because that's what I'm seeing. Right. And even the Ten Commandments, that minimal constitution for Israel, hmm. um, it, they're negative and restrictive. Hmm. So government has a job on earth to punish evil and promote the good. Probably mm -hmm. the most important New Testament passage on this is Romans 13, one through seven. Mm -hmm. Verse four, right in the middle there, that says that government is a minister of God, uh, an avenger on earth, at, that beareth not the sword for nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, sword is lethal power. The government will bear it, and one preacher said, and the government will wear it. <laughs> so it's got the lethal power potentially, mm -hmm. whether it's warfare, or enemies within, or murderers. So it has the, the, the ordained approval of God to take care of such problems mm. so they don't wreck humanity. Mm. But then spinning way back to Genesis 9, 5, and 6 is where civil government began. Mm. So if we'd mention one Old Testament reference on the role of government, when God instituted civil government after Noah's flood mm -hmm. and the, dr the ground had dried, God says, uh, he institutes civil government among men, and here's what he says. He only gives one law. And now, this is hundreds of years before Moses' Ten Commandments and the mm -hmm. 603 statutory laws that fit under that 10. So mm -hmm. you get the 613 right. dietary and other things, uh, the priestly stuff, mm -hmm. this, the civil law, the capital punishments. Right. All of that, uh, which applied first of all to Israel, came hundreds of years later after Genesis 9, 5, and 6. Mm. And here's what it says. It says, if man uh, would shed the blood of a man, by man his blood mm. must be shed. Mm. And the Hebrew word, I believe it's uh, pasak, if I remember it correctly, it means to... Um, pour out in large quantities causing death. Wow. It's a pretty gruesome picture. Right. And so God says, if that happens, that's talking about murder, mm -hmm. 
And Ratzach in Hebrew is murder. It's only used 49 times hmm. in the whole Old Testament. Well, there are hundreds of instances of killing. But murder, the thing prohibited in Exodus 20, thou shalt not murder, is what's in view in Genesis 9, 5, and 6. Hmm. This gushing, gruesome, God just destroyed the earth because it was so vile. Right. So he's doing a mulligan, a restart, a redo. And so interesting to me that he, he God's, I like to say God's for limited government. So at the institution of, of civil government, he gives just one law. It's capital punishment, hmm. equal and opposite. The Latin is lex talionis. The punishment fits the crime. Mm -hmm. So he says, if, if a man gushes out the blood of a man, that's murder, mm -hmm. then by man, here it is, this is civil human government. By man, his blood must be equal and opposite, hmm. gushed out. Wow. And so this graphic picture of a world on a dry earth of a world he just destroyed, except for eight people, hmm. God has instituted civil government. So there again, here's this principle, the punishment of evil. Hmm. So that's a key thing. And there's other things to be said, but that's probably it in a nutshell. The, the primary duty is to punish evil. Wow. Well, you are watching and listening to the Hard Questions, Real Answers podcast from Back to the Bible. And again, joining me is Reverend Perry Gothier. Uh, I, I love what you just said and how you package the role of government from a biblical uh, perspective. It is to punish evil mm -hmm. and to promote good. Now, here's what's fascinating. <laughs> I recently got into a discussion with someone uh, on that very topic. And oh, I said, this yeah. is the role of government. This right. is the role of your president. Yes. And, and, the, and they said, well, that depends on how you define evil and how you define good. <laughs> and I thought that was a fascinating discussion that we got into, mm. into that terminology. And, and I think that's a very reflective of the time where we live in where truth is relative, yes, right? right? And that's where it's so important that we as Christians come back to the Bible to see yes. what it has to say, what God has declared, and what you have just summarized for the role of government from a biblical perspective really brings a lot of clarity for our listeners and yeah. even myself. So yeah. l l let's dig in a little bit deeper, though. Though, because yes, you know today we're we're in you know we're we're recovering from a political season that appears no. to be uh, ongoing and we <laughs> ongoing, don't know when it's yes. going to end. But <laughs> one of the things I, I I hear Christians wrestling through is okay, wait a second, the, the world is different than it was two thousand years ago. Um, so here we get told you know we were to subject ourselves to the government. You know we're supposed to obey the authorities. God put them in place. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the other side of it where, you know, kind of where you are at, where people are just like, hey, man, you know, don't, I'm just not going to get involved, not my place, not going to vote. Yeah. So help bring some clarity to our listeners and those watching today. What is the role of Christians today in politics and the government? What should they be doing or not be doing? Yes. Wow. That's a great question. You know, in a, in its probably the most basic sense um, would be that when Jesus told us that we're to be salt and light, mm -hmm. um, that means we're to illuminate and penetrate. Hmm. Salt in Jesus' day, no refrigerators. So salt, you put chunks of salt on the meat and it kept it from rotting. Right. And then uh, same with the light, you you take the bushel basket off if you're, uh, and then you light the light and it illumines. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus said that we're to be salt and light really in all of life, that applies to government too. Right. In Hollywood in the 60s, there used to be a ministerial board that approved every movie. Mm. So the church was having its salt and light, illuminating and preserving. Eh, that's a little too dirty there. We're not being, we won't be saying that, no mm -hmm. cut. So mm. the ministers and those and the church's job is to provide ethics for a culture where the state's job is to enforce morality, mm. but key is where they get their information of what's moral. Mm. So back to Hollywood, uh, but but for some reason, the church got afraid of Hollywood and started to withdraw. Maybe they got weary in the fight, started to withdraw their salt and light influence. Now mm -hmm. Hollywood is dark and rotten because we took away our light and mm -hmm. salt. And guess who's mad about it? Yeah, right. Christians. Yep, yep. <laughs> Parallel. But we gave it away. Yeah, we gave it away. And we've done the same in the civil realm. Mm -hmm. the, the people of God are always to be interjecting truth 
among the kings of the earth. Mm -hmm. So you always see the institution of state and the institution of church separate institutionally, but never influentially. Mm -hmm. The church is always to affect the state. Mm -hmm. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer said the church must teach the state, must reach the state, and sometimes must stop the state. Mm -hmm. um, but why, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, should we teach the state? His answer was this, because the church has a better ethic. Mm. Well, if the church is the pillar and support of the truth, if the role of religion in the world is to give good and bad, right and wrong, those four words in a bundle are what we call morality. Mm. So when Romans 13 says government is to punish evil and promote the good, I like to wrap that up and say government's job is to moralize the culture, hmm. but they've got to do it the way God defines it. Right. So according to the Quran and the Hadith of the mm -hmm. Islamic faith, mm -hmm. those folks say that a, a Muslim man can have four wives mm -hmm. of any faith, mm -hmm. but a wife can only have one Muslim husband. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with any of that, but that percolates up and then also, Muhammad, the perfect Muslim, uh, he had 22 women in his life, 16 of them wives, one of them a nine-year-old named Aisha, nine when he consummated the marriage, six wow. when he married her. Wow. Ugh. You see these definitions of right and wrong? To me as a Christian minister, that's appalling. Right. And according to the holy book, which you and I serve, back yep. to the Bible, mm -hmm. we say that is wrong. But in their worldview, who it, it, your, your friend was right, in a sense, it depends who defines right and wrong. Mm -hmm. So in Afghanistan, it's pretty normal for people with, with Muhammad as their hero and the Quran as their book, for that to percolate up into something called Sharia constitution. Mm -hmm. See the link between religion and law? Yep. So uh, it's actually abnormal mm. to not let your your right and wrong, your ethics, your morals percolate up into law. Fascinating. The difference is whose definitions. Right. And that's why I appreciate back to the Bible. Hmm. It's, it's bringing the word of God to the world. Yes. And so the more that happens, it, it will percolate into lives and into the minds of lawmakers, the kings of the earth. Right. In Proverbs, Lady Wisdom, who's a personification of the Holy Spirit, she says, all who judge rightly do so by me, mm -hmm. and kings who rule well mm -hmm. by me. Wow. She's the definer. Wow. And then guess what happens? Justice is on the earth. Wow. It's cool stuff. Wow. Salt. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, I, I love what you said, and you simplified it. It's be salt and light. That's every area of life. Yes, it's politics. It's the neighborhood. It's the grocery store. It's it's the it's the where you go golfing. It's the yeah. kind of, everywhere. Yeah, be yeah. salt and light. Penetrate Amen. and let that light be be seen. And I think that's a good thing for us to remember. And again, what are you doing? You're simply going back to the Bible Amen. as the source of the truth. Amen. So what, what another area I want to talk about is in the area of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, very popular today to hear people talk about, well, that's your Jesus, that's my <laughs> Jesus. Today we're talking a lot about social justice. Yeah. Some people are saying, no, no, you don't understand the real Jesus, Nat Perry. Uh, he, he was a social justice reformer, a warrior. I mean, he's given out flower necklaces. He was a peace-loving <laughs> hippie. But then, I, but then I, I stop and I go, wait a second, wait a second. If Jesus was such such a peaceful, easygoing guy, why would he go to the cross? I mean, that doesn't yes. seem like a likely place. So from your perspective, uh, who is Jesus from a biblical perspective, and how does that drive us in our being salt and light today? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And it, and it really, you know, the mark of every cult is is how do they view Jesus especially? Mm -hmm. Yes. How do they view a holy book, et cetera? But, but probably the cornerstone of, of most of the cults of the world are how do they view Jesus? Mm -hmm. And a biblical view of Jesus says in 1 Timothy um, 6, 13 through 15, that he's King of Kings mm -hmm. and he's Lord of Lords. What an incredible title. Yes. And when he comes back, and I believe it's Revelation 19, 16, he's coming from the sky on a horse and he's riding, and I guess I can see his, his hair <laughs> going back because he's coming down fast. Right. And it says that on, across his chest and on his thigh is this name. I like to say it's the man tat. 
Hmm. He's got this, I, don't know, I assume it's tattooed. I don't know how it gets on your leg unless it's like indelible. Maybe it's or, just a temporary tattoo. Yeah, yeah there you go, a temp, henna or something. What are, what are those? So maybe greenish, All right? <laughs> but here's what it says. King of kings and Lord of lords. Mm. That's who he is wow. in his essence. Yes. So we can't forget that. Now the Jesus who walked the earth who's living by every statute of the 613 laws of Moses, mm -hmm. not only in obedience fully, but in his love and imagination, fascination, and total heart obedience to all 613 laws. Mm -hmm. If he failed in his attitude toward one of those laws, yes. he's a sinner. Hmm. And he could not have died for the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. So often this argument from science, Jesus didn't talk about that. Uh, I like to say, well, you know what? Jesus co-authored with his Father and the Spirit and other human authors right. all of the Old Testament, including Moses' law. Right. And so here's a better picture of Jesus. He's the Jesus of both Testaments. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Uh, but he was total in, in total obedience with all the righteous ethics of all of Moses' law. Mm -hmm. So in John chapter 8, when the, the woman caught in adultery, set up for adultery. And the problem with her was she was set upable. Mm -hmm. But the problem with the crowd was they set her up. Yeah. And it's evidenced by the fact that the man wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And ju just like Jesus in a squabble between two brothers, I deserve the inheritance. No, I deserve the inheritance. Jesus, you're God. Mm -hmm. You think you could figure this one out for mm -hmm. us? Help us out here. Help <laughs> a brother out. Yeah. Who's going to get the inheritance? And he said, who appointed me to settle estates here on earth? Mm -hmm. So that's not an argument from silence. That's a focus on mission and what I won't do. Right. I won't do this. Yeah, I got the answer, but you won't hear it from me. It's not my role. Hmm. Same with the woman caught in adultery. And that's a classic one where Jesus, the loving hippie, you know, the law is done away with, it, which it isn't. It's fulfilled. It's given hmm. its fullest meaning. Yes. And unless it's abrogated like the kosher laws or the temple ripped, Unless it's taken away, it still stands, mm. still vibrates with holy mm. meaning. Mm. So this is the Jesus with the woman caught in adultery. He, some people say he wrote on the ground, where's the man? Oh. Because you cannot do a capital punishment. He knew the law mm -hmm. and he, he loved the law. He mm -hmm. saw its holy righteousness unless it was justly carried out mm. and he he wouldn't have a part he wasn't a civil magistrate right he came as a teacher and a messiah um, so that's uh jesus is the jesus of the whole bible mm. he's a jesus of holiness but he's integral integrally the author of all civil governmental laws and statutes mm. and so he cares deeply about that mm -hmm. and um he uh Sometimes people also in this in the same Jesus the hippie mode, they fall into the Jesus only answer, hmm. like the fifth grade, the five year old girl in kindergarten. Right. What's the answer to who built Noah's Ark? Jesus. Right. <laughs> well, not really, sweetheart. <laughs> uh, we love you though. Uh, um, but there's a lot of New Testament pastors out there, a lot of pastors in our day, falling into the Jesus only hmm. answer and New Testament only answer. And they totally rip Christ out of the, away from the only Bible he ever had. Right. So what we have to import into the New Testament as we read it, do away with all these arguments from silence. Mm -hmm. He didn't say this. Well, he didn't say there's a Trinity. It doesn't mean there isn't one. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> uh, so I guess I would, I would summarize that and say, Jesus is holy, holy, holy mm -hmm. as a member of the Trinity. And he's the king of all kings. And all of those who are lording in any political position, he's the lord of. Mm. And he, maybe I'd, I'd end this long answer with this. Um, somebody, one preacher said, people are always coming to me and saying, well, pastor, we don't want a theocracy. He says, you're too late. <laughs> God has already declared, I am king of the world. And I rule in the lives of man. Mm -hmm. And in Daniel 4.4, 4, Daniel told King Nebi, mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar, he says, until you learn that the most high reigns, 
Nebuchadnezzar doesn't care about Jehovah. Mm -hmm. What are you doing preaching the Bible to a pagan king? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I do in capital state. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, back to the story. Um, uh, until you learn that there is nothing but a theocracy, mm -hmm. sir, mm -hmm. you're gonna, there's going to be seven seasons. You're going to eat the grass. You're going to bow the knee or eat the grass. Right. And that's the boldness and the clarity that New Testament ministers and men of God we got to stand up. We got to take this message of all that the king says yeah. into every realm, mm -hmm. including civil government. That's what Jesus would have us to do. Mm -hmm. His great commission, mm -hmm. go into all the world, teach them to obey everything I commanded. Yes. That would include all that backstory mm -hmm. of all this ethic. Mm -hmm. And we just drop it. We're lazy. We have these silly disconnections, but that's who Jesus is. Wow. Solid answer. Great answer. Thank you. Well, as we wrap up our time today, I have one last question, and, it, and it's going back to the passage that you referred to numerous times, and that's Romans 13. That's kind of a place that many pastors are going back to today, because I think we, we live in a political environment where, you know, we, we, we have taxes to pay, we have people over us, um, God has put people in authority. So when you look at Romans 13 mm -hmm. um, that you referred to, there's, yes. a, there's a few different things declared there. How do, what are the principles that we need to be aware of in that passage, Perry? Mm -hmm. And then how do we apply it? Because we don't want to be disobedient for our own selfish reasons. Instead, right. we want to follow God and allow Him and His Word to drive our actions. So what are the principles, and also how do we apply those uh, from Romans 13? Yes, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. Romans 13, 1 through 7, I gave a governor a copy of a Bible, and I said, Governor, I don't know if you read your Bible or not. If you don't, that's okay. But I stuck my ministry card in Romans 13, and I said, verses 1 through 7, sir, um, respectfully, are the most important seven verses in the New Testament for you to read. I, rec I recommend that you memorize them. Mm -hmm. So this is a key passage. Mm -hmm. um, and let me fly through this as an answer. Verse 1, Romans 13, 1, every person is to be in subjection to governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. The first principle is that we should have an attitude of, of submission and subjection to God-ordained authority, realizing that God is the king of kings. Hmm. He, Daniel 2.20, uh, Daniel says that he sets... He places kings and he removes kings. Why? Because mm. he's king of kings. Right. He'll do whatever he wants. Their hearts are like water. He's in control. Mm. A beautiful application in this season especially is don't worry. Mm. God's got this. Oh, wow. He's so got this. And he's not up in heaven biting his eternally big fingernails. <laughs> say, no, I don't know what's going to happen in this, this election, this mess. Mm. He cares greatly. Yep. Uh, but he is, is the author of civil government. Ecclesiastes 10, 20 says, don't curse the king in your bed. Hmm. Why would you do it in your bed anyway? <laughs> you know, maybe out chopping down trees. Right. <laughs> but in your bed, it means even in the most private spot where no one's looking, I don't mm -hmm. want your attitude to be one of despising government. And oh, I mm -hmm. tell you, Matt. There are angry Christians mm -hmm. around the country and in mm -hmm. Nebraska mm -hmm. that despise government. Mm -hmm. That's a miss. That's a disobedience to this. Wow. Secondly, verse 2, Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the thing ordained by God. Mm -hmm. And those who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. So that attitude is condemnatory. Mm -hmm. And so... Though there is such a thing as civil disobedience, and there is even speaking truth to power. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist lost his head because he confronted an unbeliever named Herod about his immorality, about his marriage constantly. He wouldn't shut up. Mm -hmm. um, and all the other evil things he did. So, does the church speak prophetically? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got some people mad at me right now. For what I'm speaking in Nebraska in certain contexts about certain sins mm -hmm. um, embedding within certain political parties. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I'm not beholden to the parties, right. any of them. Right. I'm here to announce for the King of Kings. Verse 3, for rulers are a cause 
of fear for good behavior, not of good behavior, but for evil. You want to have no fear of authority, do what is good, and you'll have praise from the same. Mm -hmm. Now, since this is back to the Bible, I think you have to answer this honestly. Mm. Uh, do, you, do you ever, uh, when you see the policeman, do you ever <laughs> check your foot? <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every too, time. Brother. I do too. That fear, uh, I could get in trouble for this because uh, police are an arm of the government. Verse 4, we're going to read next, the the armies and the police um, men, that means the city man, police in Greek is uh, the city. So mm -hmm. the city man who try to maintain general order and peace, mm -hmm. and then the army in a bigger scale, uh, protecting the borders against warfare and enemies without and Unfortunately, we might see enemies within, mm -hmm. and we might see some crushing governmental power. Right. And I will be for it if it is done in the right settings for the right reasons. I say, there it is, mm -hmm. and that's the solution. Mm -hmm. So this is tough stuff. But uh, And verse 4, such a key verse, for government is a minister of God, uh, of God to you for good. That's Greek word uh, deaconos, mm -hmm. uh, where we get our word deacon. It means a servant. So mm -hmm. government is a servant. I asked my state senators in Bible study, senators, did you ever see yourselves as ministers? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> no, but one of them, I think finally this year said, uh, yeah, because he, mm -hmm. he knows his Bible and he yep. knows that's the word. Yeah. So uh, they're ministers for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid. I'd say, be very afraid. Mm -hmm. For it does not bear the sword for nothing. Mm -hmm. It is a minister of God, an avenger, who brings wrath to the one who practices evil. Mm -hmm. So this is so key, because six verses earlier in Romans twelve nineteen it says, take not your own personal revenge. And the Christian must learn to do that. Mm -hmm. If they're raped, if they're stolen from, even if their child is murdered. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, in the flow of Romans 12 and 13, with attitudes towards others, if our life is a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. Romans 12, 1, then how are all these different applications going on? Well, for, for one, don't take personal vengeance. But, but then jump six verses later, and we see that government has an avenging role. Mm -hmm. Revenge, avenge, venger, vengeance, they're all the same word. Mm -hmm. So don't get caught up. Don't try to solve this with English. It's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. But here's the deal. If the Romans, especially the Romans living in Paul's day, with that really nasty government, really nasty, if they're to have these good attitudes and even not take personal vengeance, Romans 12, 19, does that mean that, that the most hardened criminals treasonous murderers who would who could care less if thousands die that they should just go scot-free mm -hmm. oh no mm -hmm. oh no not with the king of kings around right and he has set ministers diakonoi in the civil government Shing! they wear it and they bear it and they'll use it and oh god help us have governments that use it rightly right only at the right time but indeed use it mm -hmm. i have a, a staffer in one capital angry at me because I said, if a senator cannot get their mind and courage around the potentiality of government's lethal power, mm -hmm. they have no business being in office. Wow. And he said, so you're saying to me, if I don't believe in this or believe that death penalty is ever right, uh, that I shouldn't run for senator? And I said, that's what I'm saying. Wow. You have no, it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rick Perry, the governor of, former governor of Texas, when he heard this differentiation between Romans 12, 16 and Romans 13, 4, mm. he made a comment. He said, by golly, I wish I'd have known that. Mm. Because as the governor, when I had to, in the executive branch, when I had to execute a man in Texas, mm -hmm for a capital crime. I could have gone to him and said, this is not personal, son. I hope you have your heart right with God. Mm -hmm. I hope you've accepted Christ as your savior. But I must, as a minister of God, I must end your life. Mm -hmm. He said I would have had a whole lot more 
confidence in my duty mm. and that I was not violating Romans 12, 16. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of probably the key, those first four verses. And then it goes on and says, because of this, you pay taxes and you should render honor to govern governing leaders. In fact, at the end, give fear to whom fear is due. Mm. Mm. Watch our speed limit. <laughs> uh, or uh, all the fear that the proper government can give to those of us who would be tempted to do something wrong. Mm. And then the last phrase, um, honor to whom honor. So we're back to 1 Timothy 3.17 that says, honor the king. Mm. Proverbs says the same thing way back in Solomon's day. Solomon was a king. Mm -hmm. He says, my son, talking to Rehoboam, who mm. would be king, mm -hmm. my son, do not be given to those given to change in context. It's political rebellion. Mm -hmm. It's better really to suffer under imperfect governments than to try to change them. Mm -hmm. So you got a rebel, 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 rebel. I hate government, hate government, hate government. Don't have anything to do with those folks. Mm -hmm. Honor to whom honor is due. Mm -hmm. First Peter, honor the king. Proverbs, don't be with those given to political change. Fear God, honor the king. Wow. So those are wow. key governmental principles, and we've got to get this right. Right. And it's so interesting now because in the flow of Romans 12, uh, Romans 12, the theme really of Romans 12 is love. Mm. Don't take your own revenge. Feed your enemy. Uh, love your neighbor. Love, 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 love. And then Romans 13, 1 through 7 on government, which mm -hmm. you just discussed. Romans 13, 8 love one another. Mm. Don't have a debt, but to love each other. And do this, and don't commit adultery because of love. 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 What in the world is a sword-bearing civil governmental passage, the government? Mm. What's that doing in the flow of this? Mm. Some say it doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. I say, if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit in your mind, but here's how it fits. It, it's there in the flow, consistent. You can't love your neighbor if you don't care that God's, if you don't give honor to the king and realize God is the king of kings, he made civil government. It's his idea and a very good idea at that. Mm -hmm. You think you're also loving mm -hmm. and you want to, you think, oh, like I used to, you think only the gospel matters? Mm -hmm. Well, tell me this. Did you care enough to vote for a candidate mm -hmm. that would protect life in the womb? What if there's a little six-week six or six-month, let's say six-month, little tiny boy in the womb? Mm -hmm. But because of government funding and perversion and law or a Supreme Court opinion, let's say this little precious boy is never born. Mm -hmm. Okay, my gospel friend. You're not going to ever share the gospel with Johnny because the government allowed and even promoted evil mm. to cause him to die. Mm -hmm. He never reached age 6 or 16 or 26 mm. where somebody could share Christ with him. You call yourself a good neighbor? Mm. So the this is so important. Church state theology, it is just vital. And oh, boy, in a time like this, Nat, mm. we need it. We do. We do. Well, I appreciate your time today. I appreciate you t unpacking uh, Romans 13 and actually bringing us to church today because I thought that was a great little sermon. And if I could really summarize what, what, what yes, you just sir. said, it would be this. Jesus is king. Amen. Take, take a breath yeah. and rest. Because yeah. God, I love that. God's not biting his nails. He is sovereign. And he is King King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that's why we can rest. Well, Perry, if people want to learn more about your ministry, uh, where do they go? How do they uh, listen to your podcast? To tell them how to get involved. Thank you, Nat. Yeah, uh, we've got a website, mm -hmm. uh, capitalstudies.org, capital with an O, capitalstudies.org. Mm -hmm. And then also on Spotify, Anchor, Apple iPodcasts, uh, just The Capital Minute. Mm -hmm. And our slogan is teaching citizens about God and government minutes at a time. Wow. So we just got little short ones from two to 13 minutes, mm -hmm. uh, little, little nuggets of this kind of truth. Yeah. Cause I thought I, I got to get this out. In fact, my pastor in Omaha said, he said, Perry, you got to get on this and get this out. Right. And I said, well, I'm kind of nervous. I don't know how to do that. And, 
And so he kind of showed me how to launch a podcast. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to start small, mm -hmm. but I do have a lot of this stuff in 13 years mm -hmm. that people, when they hear it, they love to hear it. Right. And it helps the body of Christ. Wow. And I hope it helps your listeners. Oh, I'm sure it will. Just the tiniest little thank you for all you've done. Yep. Well, be sure you check out Perry and his uh, ministry. Go to his website, listen to his podcast, and we would encourage you as well to share this discussion with your friends and those who you know. Thanks, Perry, for your time today. Glad to be with you. God bless. Thank you for listening to the Hard Questions, Real Answers podcast. To learn more about our podcast, be sure you check out backtothebible.org. Also, if you enjoy our program, be sure to give us a rating and share us if you like us on your favorite podcasting app. Remember, ask the hard questions and only accept real answers. <laughs>